Hello and welcome to Stories the True and the Fictional. Today we have a guest all the way from Ireland. Um, how are you, Megan? I'm good. How are you? Very well. Um, just to get us started, do you want to tell us about your, a bit about you? Uh, so I'm Megan. I live in Ireland slash Northern Ireland and um, I'm an author. I've published five books now. I started writing, well, seriously in like 2020. And then I published my first book in January 2021. Wow. So you got a lot of books out in such a yeah. short time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess the uh, pandemic helped with that a bit. Yeah, that really helped. Like I was writing, I think, from March until like June. Um, yeah. That was like when I, was it when I published my first book or was it July? I don't know. Wait, April, May. Ju yeah, July was when I published. No. That was my first writing my first book, sorry. Uh, so I started like writing in March and I had a lot of time off in June because uh, I like left work uh, because I was like worried about the pandemic because like I live with my parents who are like in their 60s so I'm a bit worried about them. Yeah. So that gave me like a lot of time to like write. Cool. Well, we're going to dive into the icebreakers that we give everyone. Everyone that comes on has to answer these questions. So mm -hmm. are you ready? Yep. All right. If you could get rid of one thing in the world, what would it be? Right. I'm going to say raisins because sometimes my mum will buy like buns and they have raisins in them and she thinks they're <laughs> chocolate chips. And I hate chocolate or raisins. Like I hate them. Whereas I love chocolate chips. So I get rid of raisins because I hate the taste of them so much. You won't have to pick them out of anything anymore. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what's something on your bucket list? Uh, I actually really want to visit Bondi Beach and meet the lifeguards. <laughs> wow. A yeah. lot of people want to come to Australia. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. No, well, I've been to Bondi a few times. It's, it's a couple of hours from my place, but um, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a nice spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. What's your favourite sitcom? Uh, right. Well, there's three. So I yep. say I love Friends, yep. The Office, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay, but which office? Is it the BBC office or is it the uh, I've only US watched office? It. I've only watched the American one. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yes, no, they're all, they're all good. I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. Oh, actually, Big Bang Theory as well. I love it. <laughs> I love loads oh, of okay. them. There's, <laughs> there's too many. There's too many. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I think this next one is perfect for you, give, giving the kind of books that you write, but mm -hmm. do you have a zombie apocalypse plan? Right. So if I have time to prepare like a few weeks, I'd buy like a really, really expensive boat and then get like loads and loads of supplies, like food and everything, first aid kits, whatever I need, and bring that on the boat and like get friends and family and then just sail out and like probably try and fish for food if like yep. we, if the food runs out and like obviously we're all need some sort of radio because in case the apocalypse like ends because we're all want to go back to like yeah. Northern Ireland where we live yeah. um and possibly maybe find an island where there's like barely any people on it and live there but if that doesn't work out we'll just stay on the boat <laughs> <laughs> well I heard there's a, a recently there's an island off the coast of the UK that they're looking for a new monarch so you could just wow. go there and be king it's like 50 acre oh, island and they're like funny. We need someone to be king. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a pub and a castle and you can rule it. So oh, wow. <laughs> that might be an option. I think my parents were talking about that. <laughs> uh, there was something about th throwing beer on them or something. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Final question. Elon Musk calls you up and offers you to test drive his new electric time machine. What do you do or where do you go? I would want to go to the year 2100 because that's like where I want to like, uh, I think it'd be really cool to go in the future and see what it's like. Yeah. See if there are robots, like one of my books is about robots and see if like that comes true mm -hmm. at all. And I think that would be really cool. It's like go in the future and see what it's like and hope that there's no like disaster, like, I don't know, global warming or <laughs> like a meteor impact that's like ruined the earth. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, it'd be tricky because you don't know how far you could go like you don't know if there's going to be a disaster if you'll arrive in yeah. a disaster like you, do, <laughs> you don't want to um get stuck with that but um great well you've passed the icebreakers so um 
why don't we get right into it? So you write zombie romance, I hear. Yes, that's one of them. I have uh, two books on that, yep. the Rehabilitated and Second Outbreak. Um, yeah, so I have those two books and then like, no, yeah, I can't point. Three, three others, is it, I think? Yeah, yeah three others. Yeah, so so um, if I may ask, why zombies? Um, well, I just really like interest in zombie stuff. Like uh, when I was younger, I watched uh, The Walking Dead, well, I still watch it, but it's not as good now. Yeah. And um like in the flesh is a like british tv series i really enjoyed so i just watch all the zombie stuff and um i like reading the walking dead comics as well so that's yeah. like kind of inspired me to like write it and then but because i see a lot of like zombie shows and stuff where there's like a cure i thought that would be like an interest in like different spin on the zombie genre yeah that's that's cool um yeah the I, I like um, when they do it a little bit differently, like because it's mm -hmm. like, there's so many variations of zombies now. Like the um, yeah, and I like that people do it differently because if it's the same thing over and over, it gets a little bit you know mundane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But do you want to pick one of your books, your favorite one, and we'll just talk about that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, what's what's like, your latest uh, one? What's what's the last what's the last book you wrote? Uh, the newest one is called The Robot's Heart, and it's like set in the year of 2060. Yeah. And it's like about robots, basically. Um, the woman in it, like, she is obsessed with robots, kind of the way I am. And like, she watched, uh, what do you call it? I Robot. Yeah. Um, and I like watched that when I was a kid, and that like got me like really into like robots. Um, and so basically, she goes out and buys this robot, but then. Uh, there's like these reports of the robots attacking people so she starts like worrying that her robot is going to attack her and she like starts falling for him because he's like basically a human apart from like the fact that robots are like more intelligent and advanced than humans so that's like basically what it is cool um where would you rank it in your on, on not out of all your books is it like the favorite one you've written or no idea yeah no I, I don't idea. know I, I really like all of them you like all of them <laughs> yeah well, I mean, if you're going by word count, then this one and the rehabilitated, they mm -hmm. are like around about 83,000 each. So they have the most words in them. So I don't know if that is anything to go off of. Yeah. Well, um, what, what are you working on now? Anything interesting? Um, at the moment, I'm doing like a YA supernatural. So it's like this girl um, and she, her parents make her move to this school because all the supernatural have like came out and told humans that they're real so there's like there's vampires werewolves zombies witches and mermaids so her parents make her go to this school because like they're they think that she loves like the supernatural because she loves twilight but then in real life she's like terrified that there's like these werewolves and vampires and zombies um and then so it's just like how she like fits in at school and then there's like a romance between her and this well werewolf and vampire so it's like yeah, that's what that is about at the moment. So I'm like hoping that will be published within the next few months, but who knows? Cool, and that's going to be on Amazon and all the all the fun spots. Yep. Yep. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So um, let's talk about how you got into writing. Like, where did it start with you? Is it was it just a hobby or something you've always wanted to do? Um, when I was a kid, like I read books a lot, and I still do. Um. And I thought it'd be really, really cool to be an author. But then what really put me off was, you know, traditional publishing, like they have, like you get loads of rejections. And yeah. All that just really put me off. And the fact that sometimes I can like change things. And I was just like, I don't like that. Um, then like a few years ago, my friend told me about self-publishing. But then I was kind of more writing for fun at that point. And then when it came to like 2020 and there was like covid a lot clients and everything I was just like right I need to find a way to like make some extra money because I had like left my job for a few months and so it was like a way to like turn my hobby into like a job sort of a thing and so that was like what got me to like start writing um I mean I don't think I would start writing seriously if I hadn't found out about self-publishing because with that you just like upload the book and that gets accepted within like a few hours yeah. usually so there's like no one holding you back and you can do nearly anything you want. So that's what I really like about it. 
Yeah, well, def definitely, because I, I looked into all the options of it because I wrote a book. It came out last year. Um, oh, wow. But self, yeah, self-publishing, I think, is is the way. Mm -hmm. Um because one, you don't get rejected because yeah, unless you reject that. yourself, um, which mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend. Um, mm -hmm. But then, um, yeah, it's just easier. And mm -hmm. I think the only, the only problem I found is marketing. That's the yeah <laughs> getting it, it out easy. there is. Mm -hmm. And I've started looking into that too. Um, but mm -hmm. that's, yeah, to me, that's the only, only issue. Um, yeah. I know it is probably the hardest part because like, all I do is pretty much post on social media, go on podcasts, yeah. and tell family and friends. That's like pretty much it because advertising has to pay for it. And I'd be like worried that I'd put in like hundreds and then get like no sales and lose yeah. all the money. I'm just like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, well, I've I've tested the waters. I've done a few Facebook ads and a few Instagram mm -hmm. ads, and I've probably made a couple of sales, but spent ridiculous amounts of money just oh, no. trying to get those sales. So yeah um yeah um so having having done so much writing do you have any tips for people that want to start writing themselves um well i would say maybe like do a bit of a plan uh if you're like an outliner like it doesn't have to be a long plan because i know some people who spend like years planning out their books i just don't think that's very good like i think it should yeah. take longer than a week so try and plan reasonably quickly um trying to think well like don't let people discourage you like criticism is normal you're gonna get it just I mean what I do when I get criticism at the start I like disagree and I'm like no they're wrong and then yeah. I leave it a few days go back to it and the front and like yeah actually they have like valid criticism and then I try and like change it although there's the other thing like criticisms are not always going to be right and you could get yeah. like loads of different criticisms from different people I like I th this is where I've heard like other people say and they do it if you get criticism from one person and they're pointing out one bad thing, but no one else says it, then you might just have to consider it. But then if like multiple people are pointing out, then like you definitely need to try and fix it. Um, I think it also helps to have like, um, try and write most days, but not like every day if you don't want to. Um, like you need a day or two off, I think. Um, so yeah, try and write as much as you can. It doesn't have to be every day. I don't feel guilty if you're not writing every day. Hmm. I think that would probably be my advice. Yeah, no, that's 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 solid advice. Um, I just pulled up your um, author page on Amazon, <laughs> and I have noticed that you play video games, and that intrigues me because I too play video games. <laughs> so, what are you what are you playing at the moment? You know, like the I don't, is it called Horizon Forbidden West or something? Yes. Yes, so my dad bought me that for my birthday, so I'm just waiting for it to arrive now because yep. I haven't been like properly I'm, released. I'm the same. That's like my favorite game. The first one was my. Yeah, I just loved it. I loved it. But my favorite game is actually Dragon Age. I don't know if you've heard of that series. I have. I have. Yes. Yeah, it's like my literal favorite. <laughs> RPGs. Mm -hmm. I love them. They they are the best. Yeah. Um, so Xbox or PlayStation? Which are, which are you? <laughs> I prefer PlayStation because they have like way more exclusive games. And like yes. I have the PlayStation 3 and 4, whereas I only have like the original Xbox. Although I yeah. did love the, like some of the games on that, like the Jurassic Park game and the Monkey Ball. I love those. Yeah. Well, we're very we're very much alike, it seems. So I um yeah, I, I only had the original Xbox for Fable. Um mm -hmm. which was was my favorite game, and then Horizon Zero Dawn came along and <laughs> It's really good. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, do you want to tell our listeners where they can learn more about you, find your books and all, all the stuff that you would like them to know? Well, I'm on Amazon. If you search up Meg and Dara, and then my books are called The Rehabilitated, Second Outbreak, that's a sequel, Protected by a Boss is a Mafia Romance, then Everlasting Love is a sequel to that, and then A Robot's Heart, which is the robot romance, which was just released like a week ago. Um, so I'm on Amazon as Megan Dara, and then my, my surname is spelled D A R R A G H. Yep. And Megan is just M E G A N. Um, yep. Then I'm on Twitter, Megan Dara3, uh, Instagram, Megan Dara Books, and Facebook, Megan Dara Books. Those are like all my, oh, and then also Goodreads. That's just Megan yep. Dara as well. Yep. I'll, I'll be sure to put it all in, all in the show notes. Um, Thank you. 
But yeah, well, I know it's late over there, so I don't want to keep you too long. Um, but oh, thank no, you. I'm, I'm always up late writing. Like I'll be <laughs> up to six or seven in the morning. You don't you don't scare yourself with your own writing? Things you talk about zombies in the middle of the night? <laughs> Not really. No, I'm already up for that sometimes when I have to kill yeah. off characters. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I really don't like. I don't like sad stuff, but then when it's like I have to put it in my books and then I end up sometimes crying and it's not good. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's all right. Next time next time you've got a book out, you can come on and we can talk about that if you want. Um, oh, sure. Very open. And um, yeah, well, thank you so much, Megan. And um, Or Megan. Is it Megan? Yeah, Megan. <laughs> Megan, yeah. Because he, here, here in Australia, we say Megan. <laughs> So, awesome. but Megan, Megan Dara, thank you so much for coming on. And um, thank, you. thank you, listeners. Make sure you grab a copy from one of any of her books and I'll put it in the show notes for you. So um, catch you next time. <laughs>